Hey guys, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. So in our previous couple of videos, we've been talking about histograms. Those are graphical displays for quantitative data, or more specifically, bar graphs that represent quantitative data. Now you might have been wondering, hey, is there a bar graph for qualitative data? And the answer is definitely yes, and it is called a Pareto chart. So a Pareto chart is exactly that. It is a bar graph for qualitative data. So it does have a lot of similar characteristics, but I'm gonna note some of the things that are different. So one of the things that is different between a Pareto chart and a histogram is in a Pareto chart, the bars do not touch. So we're going to leave space between each of our bars. The second thing is that the way that we order our bars matters. So bars should decrease from left to right. Meaning our tallest bar should come first and then it should be like a stair step from there going from most frequent to least frequent. Other than that, everything is gonna be pretty much the same. So in this example, let's look at creating a Pareto chart for dominant hand. This is again our census data that we've been working with. So let's start with creating a quick frequency chart. My three categories are ambidextrous, left hand dominant, or right hand dominant. So if I count those up, I have one ambidextrous. I have one, two, three, four folks that are left-handed in my sample. And then counting these up or using the fact that my total needs to add up to my sample size of 24, if I do 24 minus five, there must be 19 people in my sample that are right-hand dominant. Okay, so now that I've got my frequencies, I'm ready to go ahead and put that information on my Pareto chart. Let me start as I always do with some labels. So first of all, I need a title. So this is a Pareto chart for dominant hands. My horizontal axis is always gonna represent my class. So this is dominant hand, and my vertical axis is going to represent my frequency. Now, another difference is that instead of having a numerical scale along our horizontal axis, we are simply going to place the labels for our classes or our categories along the horizontal axis making sure that we put them so that our bars will decrease from left to right. So the category with the highest frequency is right-handed. So I'm just gonna place a tick mark and label that right-handed. Labeling my next tick mark with the next most frequent, that is left-handed. And then my lowest category was ambidextrous. All right, so now I've got my categories labeled. I want to choose a vertical numerical scale that will allow me to show frequencies of one, four, and nine. So maybe I'll go up to 20 and I could count by twos or maybe fives or whatever you feel is convenient. I'm just gonna go ahead and do fives. Now I'm gonna add my bars. So my bars should be about the same width for each one and there should be space between them. We also want to center them above their label. So for right-handed, I need a height of 19. So I'm gonna go ahead and come up and create a bar that is centered above the label of right and has a height at 19. Okay, so going in, putting my label there. Now I want to leave a space and I wanna create a bar that is approximately the same width across for left that has a height of four. 
centering it over my left label. Okay, so there's my second bar. And then finally, my third bar for ambidextrous, and that one has a height of one. So way down here, trying to make it about the same width and adding my label of one. All right, guys, there's our bar graph for qualitative data called a Pareto chart. We'll catch you in the next video.